Stop buying bad SSDs. Let's get you the best SSD for gaming 2023. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. Now a big mistake many PC gamers make is buying bad SSDs, wasting money that can go into more important components like their graphics card. So today we're fixing it once and for all to get you the best SSD for gaming 2023 for both PC and console. We'll go through everything that you need to know and we'll make specific product recommendations for every budget level. Remember, if you get value out of this video, give it a like so it really helps out the channel. And of course, subscribe, click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. Before that, this video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows 10 licenses and that terrible activate Windows 10 watermark. Right now, use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD Key and get a Windows 10 Home or Pro OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 25% off. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code and boom, you have a fully licensed Windows 10 for a crazy low price, which can be upgraded for free to Windows 11. Use the links in the video description below. Technically, there are three storage options for PC. The first is the traditional spinning hard drive using a SATA data cable. The second is the SATA SSD, which primarily comes in a two and a half inch form factor like this, with a cable, but can also be found in an M.2 form factor that plugs into your motherboard's M.2 slot. And finally, there's the M.2 NVMe SSD. The NVMe just stands for Non-Volatile Memory Express, which exclusively uses the M.2 form factor and the much faster NVMe protocol. In the last two years, the price of NVMe SSD storage has absolutely crashed to the point that I no longer see a role for the traditional hard drive in a personal PC build even for bulk storage. In fact, NVMe SSDs are now cheaper than SATA SSDs, even though they're faster, mostly because SATA SSDs are being replaced by the newer NVMe ones. Though if you have an older PC or if you run out of M.2 slots on your PC, they might still be a viable option. Note that you can also buy an add-on card for modern PCs to add more M.2 slots. Consoles like the PS5, Xbox Series X, and Xbox Series S will only use NVMe drives and they have very specific requirements, which I'll link down in the video description. And I'll have separate recommendations for them as well. M.2 drives and M.2 NVMEs come in different physical sizes, speeds, and storage volumes. So which one should you get? Well, let's start with the physical size. The vast majority of M.2 NVMe SSDs today are socket 2280 because they're 22 millimeters wide by 80 millimeters in length. So 2280, but they can also come in different lengths from socket 2230, 22 millimeters wide by 30 millimeters in length, hence 2230, all the way up to socket 22110, which is again, 22 millimeters wide by 110 millimeters in length. Again, most mainstream M.2 NVMEs are socket 2280, so as long as you get that, you'll be fine. Now let's talk about speed. M.2 NVMEs use the PCIe interface on your motherboard, and that interface can have a different maximum speed rating based on what generation it is. The PCIe generation speeds refer to the rate at which data can be transferred between the motherboard and a device like an M.2 NVMe SSD. PCIe Gen 3 SSDs are the most common generation in use today, and they've seen their prices absolutely crash to below that of SATA SSDs, and they can be up to six times as fast as those SATA SSDs. PCIe Gen 4 SSDs have also fallen greatly in price and can be up to twice as fast as a PCIe Gen 3 drive. Note, I'm saying up to double because that's the maximum bandwidth of PCIe Gen 4, but it doesn't mean that a specific PCIe Gen 4 drive will run at that full speed. PCIe Gen 5 drives have just hit the market. They're still crazy expensive, typically require a robust cooling heatsink, and in theory have speeds up to double that of PCIe Gen 4 drives. PCIe is backwards compatible. So a PCIe Gen 3 drive will work on a PCIe Gen 5 motherboard slot, and a PCIe Gen 5 drive would work in a PCIe Gen 3 motherboard slot, though they will only run at the lowest rated speed. So in both those examples, we would be limited to PCIe Gen 3 speed. Also note that while every modern CPU and motherboard M.2 slot will support PCI Gen 3, if you want to use a faster PCIe Gen 4 or 5 drive, then your motherboard and CPU need to also support that speed or faster. Otherwise, the drive will run at the lower rated speed. For instance, Ryzen 5000 CPUs will only support up to PCIe Gen 4 on a 500 series motherboard M.2 slot that are rated for PCIe Gen 4. So while a Gen 5 NVMe SSD 
would work, it would only run at the lower rated speed. For more information on specific CPUs and motherboard chipset support for PCIe speeds above Gen 3, check out our motherboard buying guides for Ryzen and Intel motherboards on our How to Build a PC playlist linked down in the video description. Today, two types of NVMe SSDs are most common based on how much data they can store per unit of memory. Triple level cell or TLC drives can store three bits of data per cell, while cheaper but slightly slower quad level cell or QLC drives write four bits of data per cell. Both these drives do slow down as they fill up, with QLC drives slowing down a little bit more than TLC drives. If you are mostly gaming, then you can expect both TLC and QLC drives to last long past their warranty periods, possibly up to 10 years or even longer under that use case scenario. Let's talk about drive caching. SSDs use a system called cache, where they take the info that needs to be written directly onto the drive and they temporarily store it on a limited size but much faster temporary memory. That allows you to speed up the writing process as long as the file size does not exceed the size of the cache. The slowest of these processes is called host memory buffer or HMB, where the drive actually borrows a little bit of your system memory, your RAM, for this process. Then we have drives that have cache located on the drive itself using single level cell storage called SLC cache for short. The fastest writing drives use an onboard DRAM cache where the drive has its own version of high speed RAM just like your PC. Note that these caches only come into play when we're writing to the drive, not when we're reading from it, so it doesn't really impact gaming at all. And when we try to write very large files that exceed the size of the cache, the drive will slow down. For most users, a modern HMB or SLC cache drive will be fine. But if you do a lot of writes in a professional workflow, you will want to buy a drive with a DRAM cache. So how much storage do you need? While SSDs come as small as 120 or even 256 gigabytes, given that today's AAA games now regularly require up to 100 gigabytes and beyond, I strongly recommend a minimum of 500 gigabytes for your boot drive, for ultra budget builds, and for anything mid-range or higher, at least one terabyte, if not two, especially given how cheap storage has become. Drives as large as four terabytes are now widely available and drives with up to eight terabytes are on the market, though they're currently a little bit pricey. For productivity builds, and especially if you do things like video editing, I recommend a minimum of one terabyte and get more if you can. And if you are running a high level professional production process, you may want to get multiple drives, one for the system boot, one for your video editing scratch drive, and one for longer term video storage. One quick note on drive cloning. If you are cloning a SATA drive to an NVMe or the other way around, you may encounter some issues. While I would recommend a fresh Windows install if you're upgrading your boot drive to an NVMe drive, I'll link a guide on how to do a clone between SATA and NVMe drives down in the video description. Now let's talk about performance and the best SSD for gaming 2023. For many years, we've heard how Microsoft Direct Storage would be used in upcoming games to load assets directly from the SSD into your GPU bypassing the CPU as a potential bottleneck and greatly increasing FPS while decreasing loading times. Finally, in January 2023, we got Forspoken, the very first PC game release using Microsoft Direct Storage. In benchmarks done by tech testers, I'll leave a link to their full video below, and they're a great channel for SSD and other testing if you want to subscribe to them. They found virtually no FPS difference between SATA SSDs, PCI Gen 3 SSDs, and PCI Gen 4 SSDs and even a hard disk drive. At most, the fastest drives were only about four FPS faster using an RTX 4090 or about 5% faster than using a hard disk drive. But what about loading times? Surely there has to be a huge increase there, right? Wrong. Multiple outlets tested the game and found that as long as you had any SSD, even a SATA one, loading times were within a couple seconds of each other. Honestly, an imperceptible difference to human beings, though they were a huge improvement over the hard disk loading times. Of course, this is only the very first direct storage title and future ones could see more improvement. But in a blind gaming test done by Linus Tech Tips, the difference was so negligible that several of the participants mistakenly thought the SATA SSD PC felt faster than the PC with a PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSD. So for price to performance, what's the best SSD for gaming 2023? Well, right now, prices for PCIe Gen 3 and Gen 4 NVMe drives are incredibly cheap, with drives as low as $25 for 500 gigabytes, $40 for one terabyte, or current price sweet spot of $75 for two terabytes. Four terabyte drives are a little more expensive per unit of storage, starting at around $200 
An 8 terabyte NVMe drive start at around $900, a lot more expensive on a per terabyte basis, but they are quickly coming down in price. In fact, the big price difference between the drives has more to do with their overall quality, like the controller, whether it has a DRAM cache, and other features. But PCIe Gen 5 drives, mostly sold out right now, are going for about $350 and up for a two terabyte model, so almost four times as much. And remember, we'll need a CPU and motherboard that support PCIe Gen 5 devices to run them. Given there isn't really any performance difference, you're spending nearly four times as much for absolutely no additional gaming performance. So my recommendation is to spend that money buying a faster GPU, a faster CPU, faster RAM, or even just a larger NVMe SSD. Let's jump into some specific product recommendations. All the links to these products will be down in the video description below. I will check them regularly, and if something goes out of stock, I'll replace it with a similar product. Let's start off with some SATA drives. We'll just quickly punch through these. Again, recommend NVMe drive, but if for some reason you just have an old PC, all of your M.2 slots have been completely used up, and for some reason you don't want to buy an add-in card, which we'll show you in just a second, you can still get some SATA drives, although the prices are slightly higher than NVMe drives now. If you don't need a DRAM cache, if you just want like kind of bulk storage for your system or you just want something to upgrade your hard drive to, look at like the Silicon Power one terabyte SSD. These do come in various sizes. $36 right now for a one terabyte size. You can also look at something like the Team Group T-Force Vulcan. These drives are essentially identical. They both, both use an SLC cache on them. Both use TLC in terms of the write on them. You're only gonna get SATA level SSD performance, but as we've seen, even in gaming, not huge differences but they do cost a little bit more now than NVMe drives. If for some reason you decide you also want an actual DRAM cache to kind of speed up the write process, the Crucial MX500 one terabyte also comes in two terabyte drives, but for one terabyte, $51, it's not the terrible price right now if for some reason you need to go SATA. Let's talk about add-in cards really quick, especially for systems that either don't have an M.2 slot or have all of theirs full. You can get an add-in card like this. It goes into the PCI slot. It just goes in and screws in. Now you just want to make sure, well, we talked about speed before three, four, five, all these drives generally use four PCIe lanes, regardless of the speed. So you want to make sure to get at least a buy four adapter. That's how many lanes are down here per M.2. So if you get a dual one, you want it to be at least by eight. I would just recommend just keep it simple. Get the ones that I've listed down in the video description. And if you want to add a little fun to your build, a little bling, you can buy RGB, actually ARGB drive heatsink covers that just look super cool in your build. These will actually plug into your either an ARGB controller or they're plugged directly in your motherboard and you can control the RGB on them. They come in a number of you know various shapes and sizes and kind of lighting configurations. So I'll leave some link down in the video description if you want to think about bling out your build for about $15 each. All right, let's get to our best SSD for gaming 2023 recommendations. Let's start at the budget level. I honestly up to the mid range. Again, we're not seeing a lot of performance difference in these drives and the host memory buffer processes on a lot of these drives. These are DRAMless drives that's why they're so cheap, have gotten so, so much better and they have gotten so much faster over the last couple of years. Let's start with the drive I recommend quite often, the Silicon Power one terabyte NVMe M.2. Now here's the thing about these drives. They're more or less interchangeable. I would just go ahead and buy the cheapest one that I'm recommending or that's listed currently down in the video description. Silicon Power A60 is great. One quick note, see these stickers on top? Never remove these stickers. If you do, it does typically void the warranty on them. The stickers themselves are actually heat spreaders to keep the NAND chips, the actual memory, warm and spread that warmth across because they actually run better when they're warm uh, as opposed to like completely cold. Another great drive is the Team Group MP33. This is a one terabyte version of it, currently selling for $42. Again, these drives tend to change places in terms of which one's the cheapest right now. If we look at, you know, getting the two terabyte version of it, you can see that $74. So it's actually a better value to get the two terabyte version right now, at least in the US, than it is to get two one terabyte drives. And that's what I would recommend. Warranty on these drives tends to be pretty good. Don't worry about the right life on these. You will probably never reach that uh, if you're just doing kind of regular consumer stuff and you're not just doing data center stuff. Other good drives to consider, Crucial P3, one terabyte. Really not much more to say about this. Here's a great drive, especially if you're outside of the US, the Western Digital Blue SN570. This is the slightly newer version than the SN550 that we used to recommend. Again, really good host memory buffer process on it. Really, really nice performance drive overall. And I know, especially in some of those Asian and European markets, you can often find this one as one of the cheapest drives. Here's another drive, obviously 
$99 for one terabyte. I would not recommend this in the US market. I would definitely avoid it. But I know in a lot of Asian markets, India, as well as in the UK, this tends to be one of the best price performance drives over there. So we'll just ignore the US based price links down. There should be global links. Go ahead and click on it. See what the pricing and availability is in your region. But again, often is one of the best price to performance NVMe drives out there. Let's talk about the best SSD for Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S. Unfortunately, Microsoft's kind of has you in a little bit of a jam, at least until Western Digital starts making theirs later. Now you can also get an external SSD as well, but if you're looking for something fast, the Seagate storage expansion card. This is the kind of officially licensed one, if you will, for both Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S. $149 for one terabyte. Pretty steep, in my opinion. This actually just goes and plugs right into the back of your Xbox Series X or Xbox Series S. So it is really, really easy to install. Unfortunately, a little bit more expensive. Let me give you a couple of quick recommendations for best SSD for PS5 2023. Remember to follow the guidance, including they have to be a certain speed. They also recommend having a heat sink on them as well. And they recommend not using drives that have a host memory buffer process on them. They have to have an SLC or DRAM cache. So here's the two drives that I know work really well. Western Digital Black SN850X. It's $89 for one terabyte. Remember to get the one with the heat Heat sink on it. Now, there are some size limitations on the heat sinks for the PS5 because it's a small form factor and there's not really a lot of air going through that thing. They definitely recommend to get the one with the heat sink on it. $89 right now over at Amazon for one terabyte. The other one is the Samsung 980 Pro. Again, just another really phenomenal drive. This has a DRAM cache on it. Happens to be the exact same price as the day I'm filming this. Sometimes they kind of flip flop in terms of which one is cheaper. Either one of these is going to be absolutely amazing for your PS5. But what if you're looking for a higher performance? drive and you want to spend a little bit more money, you want to get something with a DRAM cache. At the Gen 3 speed for DRAM, honestly, right now, I didn't expect it to be on super sale. It is. It's a Silicon Power A80. This is a great drive if you're looking for something that's got that DRAM cache on it. Honestly, it's only about $5 more. Some of the cheapest non- DRAM drives or DRAM less drives out there, I'd probably go ahead and pick it up. It's on super sale right now, but I expect it to be around $50 per terabyte with a little bit of a discount when you go to that two terabytes, it's about $80 right now. Another drive that's often very competitive with it is the Samsung 970 Evo Plus, slightly older drive, but we have used these in a couple of our video editing builds. We really did like them. If you apply the $5 coupon right now, it's $54, not a bad price for it. Usually it's a little bit cheaper than that. And you do get that two terabyte discount if you wanna buy too. If you're looking for Gen 4 drives that also have DRAM on them, you want super high performance. The one that won't break the bank, Crucial P5 Plus, often on sale, $70 right now. This is not the fastest drive though out there for sure. I know it can struggle versus some of its more expensive competitors in sustained rights, but for 70 bucks, definitely won't break the bank and you do get that two terabyte discount. If you're looking for the fastest, kind of the fastest, one of the drives that I would start with is the Western Digital Black SN850X, one terabyte. We went over this for the PS5. You don't have to get the heatsink, which is nice because it's so much cheaper without the heatsink. I don't even understand why. $85, it's just a chunk of metal over the top of it. How can it be that expensive? Now, remember, most motherboards come with their own heat sinks over the top, so you can get those. You'd also get aftermarket ones as well. $84 for one terabyte, and right now it's going for only $150 for two terabytes. Wow, what a deal. Severant Rocket is another really, really good performer. This one's a little bit more expensive, $89, honestly. As long as the prices are about the same, I think any of these last three I give you, I. I I'd consider interchangeable. And then the final drive is a drive that we use all the time in our video editing process. We have four of these in our 5950X video editing rig. That's the Samsung 980 Pro. These are Gen 4 SSDs with the DRAM cache on them. I'm aware that they had a firmware issue. Just make sure you update the firmware on the drive using the Samsung Magician software. Two terabytes right now for $139 is an insane price. Check out all the links down in the video description for current pricing and availability and the best SSD deals right now. And if you got value out of the video, please give it a like. It makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. Speaking of cool content, why don't you check out our how to build a PC guide right here. We go through everything that you need to know step by step. We take you through the process or check out our PC build guide playlist right here. We go through all kinds of builds from the 13600K, the 5600, the 7600 and more. And we'll catch you on the next one.